Very observant. He let himself in. He's got a key and let himself in. Everybody's bright tonight. Must be something in the water. It's like the bloody brain's trust in here, isn't it? <laughs> Mastermind. I don't like him having a key. I've started so I'll finish. <laughs> so when the Magnus Magnuson ain't asked you to go on his show. And I don't like you washing into my living room as if you owned it. But I live here, Mrs. Ollingbury. You should knock before you come in. Oh, yeah, and who'd be moaning about dragging you down the stairs to open the door to let him in? He's your lodger. You should open the door for him. <laughs> and why so I'm out? You know, you're a very unreasonable man. You just don't try and get on with me. <laughs> Can I talk to you for a minute, Mr. Garnet? What? Well, it's rather private. What, you mean you don't want her listening? Oh. I want to hear your business. Well, if you was upstairs in your own half of the house, you wouldn't be able to, would you? <laughs> well, it's all right. I'll talk to you later. You're not going out, are you? Only over the pub later, that's all. It's all you ever do. It must be warmer down here in this room. <laughs> must be more comfortable than upstairs, is it? If you think it gives me any pleasure being down here with you, Mr Garnet, well, no, thank you. You're the last company I would choose to be in. I have to live above you. I can't help that. Oh, if only I could move away from you and people like you. Oh, if the Lord answers my <laughs> prayers and the council finds me somewhere else to live, I shall be grateful to my dying day. And he should soon. The Lord will find me somewhere soon. I mean, I've lit enough candles and said <laughs> enough prayers. He'll deliver me from the likes of you soon. What I've done to deserve it, I shall never know, but I'll find out. When he calls me and I stand before him, I shall ask him, I shall say, <laughs> Why did you make me live upstairs about Mr. Garnet? <laughs> it's a dreadful punishment and one I'm sure I don't deserve. Yeah, well, in the meantime, until he does call you, <laughs> why don't you go upstairs your own half of the house and say a few more prayers to him? <laughs> Let us go, go on with what is private business down here. You'll be nearer to him up there. <laughs> I don't care what you say, I still think she fancies you. <laughs> this is a private conversation, if you don't mind. <laughs> all that charisma, the turn of phrase, you silver-tongued smoothie. All right, all right. <laughs> what do you want? Well, I've got this form from the council. Now, if you sign it and say that you're my landlord, I can get a rent allowance. If I sign it? I'll still be slipping you the readies, but I can get... Never mind what you could get. What about what I could get? <laughs> I could get a tax ban on my door. That's what I could get. Yeah, but you don't pay tax. I don't intend to, neither. <laughs> I'm not signing no bloody papers. Blimey. They think I'm, I'm a landlord. They come on me like a ton of bricks. We've got to sweeten her up as it is. And you, stop annoying her. Me? Yes. <laughs> and another thing, look. Try and make out you don't live here, you know. <laughs> or make out you're leaving at night, you know, stand on the doorstep and yell, Good night, Mr. Garnet, see you in the morning. Because <laughs> I'm black. Now, if you do with being black, you've got black on a brain, you have. You just don't want people to think I'm taking in lodgers, that's all. Somebody might grasp at the DHSS. <laughs> Holy mother upstairs, more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> As it is, I, I say I've got a banger and promise her you'll do things for her. What? Tings. Well, she wants early morning tea at six, breakfast at eight, coffee at eleven, lunch at twelve, afternoon tea at three, high tea at six, supper at nine. She wants all her laundry. Now, sleep. just a minute! You want the rain, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> don't know what I'd do without this place, Arthur. I bet. Nothing on the telly. No, nah, never is. Nothing you'd want to watch. Nothing I want to watch. Nor me. <laughs> I mean...
The money they charge for it, you know. They, you think they've put Sunny on, eh? It's not cheap. <laughs> I tried watching it tonight, I had to give up. It's not easy. It's either coming over here or for sitting with yourself. I searched all over it the other night trying to find that pornography they keep talking about. <laughs> I wouldn't watch it. I couldn't find it. <laughs> that, that Mary Whitehouse, she seems to know where to find it. <laughs> Look, she's an expert, isn't she? A porn expert, that Mary Whitehouse. <laughs> but she spent a lifetime studying it, she has. Yeah. Been studying it for years, hasn't mm. she? In at the start. Yeah. I bet there's nobody knows more about porn than she does. <laughs> Lord Longford. <laughs> no, she's been at it longer. <laughs> yeah, but he started before she did. Yeah, but she's been at it longer. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to given up on it lately, doesn't he? Hmm. Probably got a bit too much for him. <laughs> He used to travel all over the world to find it, didn't he? That's right. Yeah. I think I'm correct in saying it was him what introduced it to this country. <laughs> and he's not a young man, neither. Oh, no, you've got to be a young man for that sort of thing, huh? Full of energy. Mm -hmm. And willing to travel. <laughs> she don't seem to travel much to find it, does she? Who, oh, Mrs Whitehouse? Mm. She's about to find all she needs here. On the television? Yeah, all she wants. I can't find it. <laughs> Look for the red triangle. Red triangle? That's what they say. Programs with a red triangle. Channel 4. That's where you'll find the filth. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's been all the papers. been well publicised, as. I've looked at Channel 4. I've never seen anything worth watching much. We've got to search for it, Arthur. I'll give it another go, then. Arthur, <laughs> yeah. oh, you've seen this. The bloody no, government stuck that through my letterbox. AIDS, don't die of ignorance. <laughs> Everyone's getting a mouth. That's a bloody cheat, that is. What? what sort of people they think we are? Hey, it's an insult that is putting that through my letterbox. Listen, government wants to warn people. Don't want to stick that through everybody's letterbox. No, no, no. Don't. You might make a few inquiries. I can tell them whose letterbox to stick that through. <laughs> Anyway, round here, mate, it's not age that's a killer, it's age, old age, that's a killer round here. I mean, a bloody government has spent a fortune on advertising AIDS, don't spend a penny on what's really killing people. Mm. I'll tell you something, people who get AIDS, Arthur, yeah. deserve to get AIDS. It's their own fault and they deserve the consequences oh, yeah. and bloody good riddance to them. <laughs> <laughs> Unnatural behaviour yeah. causes AIDS, isn't it? <laughs> Fornication, isn't it? <laughs> And, and decent, respectable people don't go around fornicating, do they? Oh, come on, Alf. I bet you did your share of fornicating when you was younger. <laughs> uh, and you're decent and respectable. Right, but some of us is a bit fussy about who we do it with. <laughs> I mean, so your wild oats. Sure, that is all part of a man's education, isn't it? It fits him out with the experience he needs to take to his wife on a wedding night. <laughs> I mean, it's his duty to equip himself with that sort of knowledge, isn't it? I, I, I mean, unless... Unless he's been deceived by it and landed himself with a wrong, and that is knowledge that he can't expect his bride to have, because that is knowledge that a decent, innocent, virginal girl would expect her husband to have acquired as part of his preparation and grooming for the marital bed. You sound like you've been reading Barbara Cartland. <laughs> yeah, Elf, um, have there uh, been a lot of women in your life, then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, I'm not the sort of man to boast about his conquest. Oh, no, no. Well, it's not my fault, Arthur, but I realised years ago that no. I was the sort of man that one woman could never be enough for. No. I mean, I... I suppose, if the truth be told, really, I should never have got married. No. no. I mean, there was else. God, God rest her soul. soul. <laughs> <laughs> Madly and beside herself in love with me. Well, what could I do? What could I do, eh? I couldn't be a rotter and dumper, could no, I? Of course not. No. No. Not in me to treat a woman like that, Arthur. 
I mean, there she was sweet and pure, devoted to me. Her art was set upon me. I mean, her whole life, everything would have been destroyed. Laid waste, if I'd have said no. But, I mean, luckily for her, I knew, I knew my duty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I've, there is a joy in giving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I made her the happiest woman alive. <laughs> and, and that was enough for me. <laughs> Enough for her, too, I suppose. <laughs> See, all our troubles, Arthur, started inviting foreigners into this country. Hey, no, no, watch it, Arthur. You've got to be careful how you mention foreigners these days. I mean, say what you like about the English, but button your lip when you talk about foreigners. I mean, your free speech don't stretch to ethnics. <laughs> Big mistake, that was. I mean, how are we to know what they're going to bring in with them? Point, <laughs> Arthur? Yeah. I mean, if we must have them, they should all be put in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Tourists as well. Yeah. I mean, if they're not prepared to spend six months in quarantine, sod them, let them go somewhere yeah. else. Because <laughs> I'll tell you something, mate, AIDS is not English disease, is it? Hmm? No, it didn't start here. None of the venereal diseases started here. <coughs> it was all brought in... <laughs> it was all brought in here by foreigners. <laughs> I mean, it's not fair, I look. I'm old age pension, right? Right. Right? right. If, I mean, if I've got it right, give me right. No, you're right, you're right. right. No, now, right. I like a drop of whiskey, right? Right. I mean, it's a medicine to me, isn't it? Yeah, sure, sure. But I can't get a prescription for it, can I? I'm not paid in enough yeah. for it, aren't mm, I? Mm, I right. mean, if I was a drug addict, yeah. I mean, they'd get all they want on the National Health Day, do yeah, yeah. Clean needles, I mean, they get prescriptions now for heroin, cocaine, amogadums, valiums, the mm. sleeping pills. They hand them out like bloody sweets, they do. Yeah. I mean, even your sex maniac get his condoms for free now. Yeah. <laughs> but when you... When you're poor and starving and old age pensioner like I am, nobody wants to give me nothing. Not even AIDS. <laughs> yeah. oh, Here we come. Hey. Here we oh, come. Lord, oh, Dr. Cyril, yeah? a man, a man of the hypocritic oath, mm. you know, and mm. he's living in sin with my daughter. I mean, and I'm supposed to look happy when I see him. Oh, Can I buy you a drink? Yeah, large whiskey, medicinal. Medicinal? Why, what's wrong with you? Nothing what you'd understand. <laughs> and you, Arthur? Oh, yeah, uh, I'll have a drop of the tank, please. Mm. Uh, doctor, could you spare mm. me a minute? Um, I was going to come down and see you tomorrow, but as you're here now, it's, it's my chest. Uh, not now. If you care to pop into the surgery tomorrow. Yeah, well, if you can have a look at it now, save me the time, you doctor, see. Doctor, mm. uh, you know about my foot. Yeah, I'm not I... holding surgery here. Oh, God! Oh, my leg! It's the one I told you about, the scorn again. Oh. I told you I can't find anything wrong with your leg. Yeah, that's what the other soppy old sod used to say, innit? <laughs> he was baffled by it too. I ain't got the honesty to say that they, 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 they ain't got the knowledge. No, no let, let me suffer. I've got to suffer through their ignorance. Just my luck in it to have a leg that's got to wait for medical knowledge to catch up with it. <laughs> it's the same with my chest. They've had my chest down that surgery for years now. And it's never responded to anything they've tried on it. My chest has been all over London. It's a bit like your leg, I'm afraid. It was before its time. I mean, I've had the odd month off here and there, but nothing like I've been entitled to. I, I even passed the army medical, it did. They sent me to war, a sick man. I'll tell you what, Alf, if I ever I catch anything else, I pray to God it's something they know about. <laughs> Get their money too easy, oh, if you yeah. ask me. Try and cut down on the smoking. I don't smoke. He's got something wrong with him and smoking didn't cause. <laughs> but you're pleased we popped in here tonight? Uh, yeah. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, well, don't drink too much of it. Too much of it? How do you think we're going to get too much of anything on old age pension, eh? <laughs> and, unless you care to prescribe it for us. And I don't mean medicine. A few juicy steaks on a national health. Mm. I've got a long way to curing a lot of what's wrong with people around here, I tell you. Better than these, Will. Here, Doctor, the, um, them Valiums, I mean, I prefer a drink myself, but, you know, they're very popular, aren't they? Well, you don't want them. Why not? They're habit-forming. So is this. <laughs> and so is this. And their habits, I'm finding it very hard to afford. I mean, 
Jack, if, if you can put me in the way of some cheaper rabbits, you know, something that'll do the trick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be very grateful, son. <laughs> well, um, Valiums, things like that, they're really for people who are very depressed and finding it very difficult to face life. Uh, people who let things get on top of them. I'm very depressed. <laughs> I'm finding life very difficult to face. I'm letting things get on top of me, and what you're doing with my daughter is one of them. Oh, come on. He's doing nothing wrong with Rita, Mr. Nothing wrong. Have, have you read this, eh? He's a doctor. A doctor. He should know better, a doctor. AIDS? What's that got to do with it? Well, has he been checked? <laughs> checked? He's a doctor. Well, does that make him immune, does he? <laughs> I suppose the germs ignore him, do they? They say, oh, no, we mustn't give him anything. He's a doctor. <laughs> of course they catch things. It's then what spread it about, isn't it? I mean, they catch things off one patient and give it to another. That's why I don't like going too near him. Don't breathe all over me. <laughs> Tell him, the more I see a doctor's like him messing about with people's daughters, I mean... He should be one of the first to be checked. I can you? assure you, Mr. Garnet, you need have no fears. Well, you've been cleared, have you? I'm not surprised the way you live. <sighs> Doctor, do you think I'd be wise to get my staff cleared? Uh, no. No, not you. Why? What have you been up to, Arthur? Nothing. Well, not lately, but I was in the war, wasn't I? <laughs> and I messed about a bit then, and some of them were foreign girls. And we was told not to mess about with foreign girls, but, well, you know how it is. I mean, well... I mean, nothing's shown yet, well, I mean, but, you know, sometimes it lays dormant, doesn't it? Well, that's too far away, Arthur. You've got to have done it lately. Yeah, but they're going back farther all the time, aren't they? Yeah, but not as far as the war. <laughs> what about my wife? Do you, uh, do you think I ought to get her clear? I'm afraid there's quite a bit of hysteria developing about this. I'm inclined to think that people with AIDS have more to fear from us than we have from them. Their immunity to disease is diminished, and the germs that we carry on us can be lethal to them. The germs we carry on us? You s speak for yourself. <laughs> anyway, you're laughing, ain't you, eh? You should complain about germs. Well, you make all your big profits, innit? I mean, look at his lot with your AIDS. I mean, it's the best thing that's ever happened to them, innit? It's marvellous for his business, these. This is rubbing his hands, they are. Wee! AIDS! AIDS means full employment and bigger profits for him and his mates, did it? I mean, now they're talking about compulsory blood tests, isn't it? Whoa! Look at all the money to be made. <laughs> AIDS, AIDS it's, a, it's a boom for your doctors. Oh, what a marvellous new disease, AIDS. Oh, there'd be a lot of money in that. Stocks and shares are going up. And <laughs> compulsory blood tests, we just have, have to extend our premises and take on a lot more staff. Yes, well, I must go. I've got calls to make, patients to see. Oh, yes. Mustn't neglect the business. Must. Open up the shop for a few more hours, I eh? Keep the money rolling in. You want to see someone who's sick, mate? I am sick. There's one here standing right in front of you. I am sick. I'm sick of life. Sick of this life, I am. I tell you, and tired of the bloody unfairness of it all. Yeah? And what about Pat Pat? I'll tell you something. You, if I had some of the money that I paid out in insurance and national health, I'd be a rich man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't need their bloody rotten stinking pension. You're right, Mr. Don't Gunn. stall me. I've got enough money. It's one of them dirty shops, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's why your windows are painted all over. So as your casual passers by can't see anything and complain. Disgusting. You have to go inside to see anything. Or anything sort of. Yeah, you know, like. You know. <laughs> Coming in. Should do, I suppose. Yeah. As far as we know what sort of pravities people get up to. I mean, <laughs> Lord Longford, Mary Whitehouse, they had to see it. We've got to see it. I mean, can't hide from it. No. Oh. No, we've got to go in. Oh, yeah. We've got to steal ourselves. Mm. I mean, like they done, you know, like mm. Lord Longford Mary Whitehouse. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got to know what sort of perversities you're up against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's no good hiding away from it. I mean, if, if they hadn't searched it out for us... What? Lord Longford and Mary Whitehouse? Yeah. yeah. We wouldn't know what's going on, would we? No, no. So, um, we... Well... 
half due of her. Yeah. Um. Why they paint the windows out, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> oh, look at this. That's what it's called, uh, 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 um, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, decent, respectable people, I mean, I shouldn't have to look at things like this. No, nor this. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> That's disgusting, that. That's the sort of stuff your Lord Longford used to take home for Mary Whitehouse to see. Yeah. Oh, here, yeah, look at this. She'd like to see that. Oh, dear, oh, Lord. It's disgusting. Sure to see that. Send it to her. And him. Oh, yeah, and him. He ought to see it, too, yeah. Uh, look at this, Lord. What? Look at that. Whips and chains and... Well, that, that bondage, that is, you see, uh, people, there's people half who like to be chained up and whipped. There's men, you see, who pay girls to do that. <laughs> but that'd hurt, wouldn't it? <laughs> there's some men who like to lay down naked and let girls walk all over them with eyes to let their wheels on. <laughs> and that's... It's a fact. It's their thing, like. See, they get a sexual thrill out of it. It's not for the likes of you and me. I mean, it's not a working class thing. It's more your. <laughs> it's more your upper classes going for that sort of thing. It's a sort of a perversion they suffer from, you see. It's, it's a pass down the line. All to do with inbreeding, you see. <laughs> they like to keep it among themselves. They never go outside their own circle for it, except for whores and prostitutes when they're sowing their wild oats sort of thing. See, they like to try... They like to try and keep themselves thoroughbreds like their dogs and their horses. <laughs> and you never see thoroughbred dogs and horses except they're highly sensitive, as they call it. Mad is the word. <laughs> um, and you see, I, I mean, a, a dog will snap at you. Or if it's a horse, he'll kick out at you. That is why all your upper-class families have got someone or other locked away in a madhouse. <laughs> you take your conservative party. I mean, I don't mean the ordinary voters like you. The leaders of it. See, they're always in sex scandals. And I don't mean the sort of sex, that ordinary sex, that you and me are going for. <coughs> News of the world sex. <laughs> I mean... Your Labour Party have their scandals too. Not sex scandals. Oh, well, that's because they can't afford the oars, you see. <laughs> tell you what... I'll tell you what... what? I'd like to get a few... Labour MPs in them chains and put a whip to them, eh? <laughs> Half a scargle. What? <laughs> I'd pay for him to be whipped and walked all over in high heels. <laughs> and Tessie O'Shea wearing them and all. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's the same with your upper classes with their food. See, they never eat their food till it's rotten. <laughs> The upper classes, you see, I mean, oh yeah. Now, if they had a rabbit, or, or air more like, 
See, yeah. they wouldn't put it in a stew like you or I would, or, or, or in a pie. No. no, no. They hang it up in a cupboard till it stinks the house out for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they never eat it till, till it's old. It's the same, it's the same with their booze. Wine, brandy, whiskey, they don't drink that till it's old. Cool. Oh, yeah, they, they won't drink that while it's still fresh. I'll buy this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone's got to see it. I mean... Oh, you mean to get it banned? Yeah, well, someone's got to see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alf. Alf, are you coming? <laughs> Yeah. Well, just till later. I can't take it home. What's the matter? Are you scared of your missus or something? No, of course not. I just don't want her to get the wrong idea, that's all. Go on here, take it. No, I don't Go want on. it. Don't no, I don't want that. Don't you? Get off. Oh, no, wait. Huh? <laughs> <Don't No good. I knew he was no good. Oh, God, I'm never going to sleep in my bed knowing he's laying down here beneath me, harboring evil thoughts of women, looking at pictures like that and working himself up into. Oh, God, he could pounce at any time. <laughs> Tell him he must take that book and go. You're disgusting! Huh? Don't deny that was found in your room. You've been poking about in my room? No. Mr. Garnet wouldn't have to <laughs> if you were decent and respectable and behaved yourself in your room. Well, hang on a minute. Let me get this straight. You are claiming that you found this oh. in my room. Don't you deny it? It's not mine. I said don't deny it. I'm not interested in books like that. Well, I don't want any more of this filthy talk in my house. I, I shall burn this. And throw him out. And throw him out. You haven't got a fire. You can't burn it on an electric fire. Well, I, I, shall, I shall tear it up. <laughs> I'll do it. Page by page. Anyone at home? <laughs> you coming up the pub, Elf? Yeah, I'll, um, I just got... The book. Have you got the book? <laughs> <laughs> Is this it? <laughs> <laughs> 